All right, ladies and gentlemen, back by popular demand is the Double B podcast. We took a little bit of time off to uh, take care of our families, take care of some some other stuff that we'll talk about some other time, um, and a lot of conversation about what we should do. So um, on the podcast, we have Brad Coy back from Kansas, back in Utah. We have Kevin. He's in central Utah down in down in Venice, and obviously I'm here. Um, we have decided we're going to take a little bit of different different talk, different direction, and we're going to talk about things that are a little bit more important to us uh, versus kind of being all over the place. And we landed on, we want to talk about mental health and why it's super important to us and, and why mental health is, in, is something that we feel passionate about. Um, so I'll just kind of kick this off and we'll, and I'll kind of hand the reins over to Kevin or Brad to kind of share why they feel passionate about mental health and, and why it's something that they feel like we should start with. Brad, I'll let you start. Okay. Well, um, I think biggest thing really is it, it affects us all. Um, and as much as we don't want to believe that it doesn't affect us all, um, we're, we're pretty wrong in that fact because whether we're depressed or anxious or angry or not wanting to do some things, um, I mean, I guess with us three together, um, we've, we call each other out on it, you know, you know, between Kevin calling me out, hey, you're depressed. We need to figure out how to get you out of here. Or, hey, you know, if I'm talking to my wife, I am anxious about this. I mean, I... I had my truck stolen two weeks ago and I have just been absolutely anxiety ridden and couldn't focus on anything because now I got to find a truck. I got to deal with all that junk. I got to deal with how truck market is 25% higher than it was last year. Um, and now I got to talk with my wife because she's anxious. She's depressed. I'm depressed. And it, it makes it difficult to, function in life correctly I would almost say for me at least you know because now I gotta go to work and try to figure that out and I think that's the best for me it's just it, it it's tough to not really uh focus on the bad you know and uh be able to not and not allows me to uh not allows me i'm a terrible at english it, it doesn't allow me to focus on the good that's there because you know that there's a ton of good in life and in the day and it, it makes it tough not to not to see that and be able to get past the bad because then you just start focusing on the bad for myself i think we wanted to do mental health in general this season we're going to kind of break down into various disorders and things like that as these episodes evolve on this new and uh, improved double b show but mental health is something that truly does affect everybody whether it be direct or indirect everybody in this world knows somebody that has something whether it be anxiety depression um bipolar something to that effect so learning how to live with it or live with somebody who has it is extremely important and uh, I think we've all experienced our own set of mental health problems at some point I mean depression is one of those things that uh, I think most people at some point in their lives have experienced uh, the severity of it is a whole different thing, but like Brad said, anxiety, that one's actually in my research, one of, if not the most common of mental health problems in the world. So if you don't know how to control it, it kind of tends to be absorbed by others around you and it can lead to a pretty awkward and weird situation and you have to know how to handle it. Yeah, I love that. Um, <clears throat> for me, uh, to, to Kevin's point, you know, um, 
anxiety, depression, all that stuff is 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 rampant in the world. Um, just for fun numbers, fun fast numbers, according to the National Alliance of uh, National Alliance on uh, Mental uh, Illness, they report that one in five U.S. adults experience mental illness each year. One in 20 U.S. adults experiences serious mental illness each year. One in six U.S. youth age 16 to 17 experience mental health disorder each year. 50% of all lifetime mental illness begins by age 14 and 75% by age 24. And then they, re then, they, then they report that suicide is the second leading cause of death among people age 10 to 34. And so those are some, those are some numbers that if they don't call out to you, they should, um, and, they, and they should hit home. Um, and so to, to Kevin's point and both to Kevin and Brad's point, we're going to talk about the disorders, but I also think we're going to talk about some of the ways that, that, that the three of us, because mental health is hits all three of us, um, that, that we've learned to address and, and be able to, um, I won't use the word treat, but, uh, but definitely address. Um, the mental illness, and and we're going to get into some weeds, and we're going to try and challenge our own perspectives, and we're going to challenge the audience's perspectives, because I think too many people don't um, don't fully respect the the width of of um, of mental illness across the U.S. population. You know, it's what's funny is most of those. Um, numbers that you provided are right in between everything that I've read. Um, every website kind of has their own um, percentages and facts and things like that. Uh, mentalhealth.gov says one in six young people experience mm -hmm. a depressive episode. Right. Um, but I've seen other ones that say one in four. So it's somewhere in that range, one in four to one in six. Right. And what's crazy is it all, it's all different based on the population. Like for my master's thesis at the University of Utah, when I was working on my master's of statistics, I worked on long haul truck driver, truck driving population. And that population is riddled with mental health. And, and so it all like, you look at a specific cross section and you're going to see the numbers go up, up in the number of mental illness cases or like plummet in the number of mental illness cases. And so I'm really excited to get into the population analysis of it all. I know I'm weird and crazy and all that jazz. It's because I, the Go ahead, Tim. I said, <laughs> Billy's the numbers guy. Yeah. I, I am the numbers guy. All I had to say. <laughs> I mean, and, I mean, I've been horrible and didn't really do my research. So I kind of feel bad because, you know, I've been trying to do stuff at home, but just a quick Google search right here. The top five most common mental illnesses is depression which says it impacts an estimated 300 million people just in the United States. Yeah. Like, holy cow. And then you have anxiety, bipolar, schizophrenia, and dementia. And it's like, I don't think people really want to talk about it because it makes you feel, I mean, for me, it makes me feel like crap. Hey, I'm depressed. I don't know how to get out of it. You know, it, it's well, tough I think to for talk a lot of other people as well that it makes it real. It yeah. makes it real. It does. About it. And I think that's, you know, you, you look at a bunch of videos. Oh, hey, who do you talk to when you're when you're depressed? And a lot of guys are like, I don't. Well, I mean, we were brought up. Yeah, you don't talk about it because you're a man. Right. But we should at least you should have that tight grit knit group that you should be able to talk to somebody and you should be able to go, Hey, I'm messed up. I don't know how to get out of it. I don't know how to push out of it. I need help. So I don't want to go down that rabbit hole too far because we did an hour of that exact topic with Liam church. So if anyone's interested in going and finding that it is Liam church, Yes. You discuss mental health. Uh, and 
I could just listen to him talk forever because he's uh, British. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> but I wanted to go a little bit deeper. We're going to kind of start wrapping up here. We're going to keep our episodes a lot shorter than we used to. We had already mentioned a lot about suicide being the number one cause of death in the U.S. and the number two leading cause of anyone 10 to 24 is what mine says, 10 to 34 is what Billy got. The suicide crisis lifeline did change their phone number. Now it's super easy to remember. It is 988. That's it. And then you press one. They also have a text line that's 838255. But I wanted to kind of share just a little bit of background on myself and then round table with both of you guys so that people understand potentially that we're not just out here spouting a bunch of crap. I was diagnosed with ADD as a child, went through uh, Ritalin and Adderall and all the pills and learned how to deal with that throughout my life. Still, to this day, I deal with it. I have the most focus issues of anybody in the world. Um, I've always had a little bit of a stutter, which has caused a little bit of anxiety for me. And as a teenager, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and uh, clinical depression. And I also survived two suicide attempts in my life. So still here, still talking a bunch of crap. So just that's my backstory. You know, um, I, I don't know about Billy, uh, but coming coming from my side, you know, we, we me and Billy have a father that was in the Marines for, I think, six years, but he didn't show emotion, you know, like there was no emotion from like when I can remember to like 23 it was the first time I saw my dad cry. And that's when my brother moved to ASU and I wasn't even there to see him cry I just heard that he cried and it's like holy crap like it it, it kind of brings it brings it in like yeah okay it's it is okay to be emotional you know like you, you don't have to hide it in you don't have to you know push it down to where it becomes a fester and a sore and a cancer and then you just explode one day um and I I'm still I still struggle with showing emotion and my wife tells me, Hey, you know what? You're going to turn into one of those salty people if you're not emotional. And I, I still learn how to do it. I mean, I'm learning how to not be depressive. Sometimes I, I reach out to friends and, and, I, and I talk to them and I feel incredibly embarrassed when I do it. Cause you know, I'm one of those guys, you don't, you don't tell anybody you're struggling, get over it, you know? And it's just one of those things that I'm learning. And I think if I can continue to keep learning, I'm going to get better. So I guess I'll share and then we'll wrap up. Um, I have, I won't say that I'm addicted to adrenaline, but I'm definitely addicted to doing whatever I can to quiet the anxious and depressed feelings. And so whether that be athletics or whether that be gaming or whether that be horrible addictions um that uh that's what i would do to get rid of feeling anxious or feeling depressed because i didn't know, understand what i was feeling i couldn't explain it it just didn't feel like i wanted to feel so i would do whatever i could to get a dopamine hit um to get rid of the anxiety and depression um, and to this day, I still have that problem um, that I love the dopamine hit. Um, and I have to address that because I want to not feel anxious and not feel depressed. Um, similar to Kevin, um, I have not lived through uh, suicide watches, uh, suicide attempts, but I have been on suicide watch. Um, and um, I'm not... I'm not familiar with Kevin's past, but my suicide attempts were, were the quiet, silent ones where I was gonna take, I was gonna take the quiet stuff and just take the stuff that made me go to sleep and never wake up because I was, I was the silent type. I didn't want to make it loud. Didn't want to make it painful. Didn't want anybody to have to clean up anything. It was just silent and lock out. Um, since then, I've kind of learned that 
that obviously that's not that's not uh, that's not normal, <laughs> and uh, uh, I've had to learn how to address it and and learn how to talk about my feelings. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are excited to push ourselves in the world of mental health and try to expand our knowledge and and help uncover and kick over some rocks that um, we um, have not kicked over before. And it's gonna stretch us and it's gonna make things awkward and we're gonna have to learn things that we probably haven't learned before. Um, so with that said, uh, next week we'll have another episode on mental health. Please follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram at, uh, at Double B Creates on Instagram and then Double B Creates on Facebook. We will be posting on Facebook the next topic for next week. So if you want to be ahead and do some research on the next week's topic, look on Facebook. We'll also post it on Instagram. Check that out and we'll uh, let the topic out and hopefully you can do some research and pipe into our conversations through the chat. So check y'all next week, ladies and gentlemen, we're out.